Hi everyone and welcome back. In the previous video we watched the author make his submission to the journal. In this video we'll see what the editor sees once that submission was made. Just a warning, this video is a little bit longer than usual as it covers quite a bit of important information about the editorial interface. But when you're ready, let's jump in and take a look. Our editor is Calla Reese, and in OJS the journal editor role is very powerful. Editors can see everything that's going on throughout the journal. They can see and edit all the user accounts. They can temporarily log in as other users on the system and can make any and all decisions about the submissions. Some journals just have a single editor who does just about everything, including working with the authors, selecting the reviewers, doing the copy editing, layout editing, and proofreading. Many small OJS journals on shoestring budgets, or even with no budgets at all, work this way. Other journals are divided into a single chief editor, providing oversight, and with multiple section editors, each of whom takes responsibility for the submissions into their section of the journal. They may also have dedicated copy editors, layout editors, and proofreaders. This is the setup we're going to follow in this course but it's important to know that OJS is flexible enough to work with any staffing configuration you might need. Okay, let's get down to work. Cal has received an automatic email from the journal, letting her know that a new submission has arrived. This kind of automation is just one example of the many ways that OJS makes running a journal easier and more efficient. Here she's logged in and can see all of the submissions she's working with, including the new one from Jalal at the top. Before we take a look at the new submission, I want to go over what you see here on the screen. The options on the left are covered in more detail in the Setting Up OJS 3 course, so I won't cover them here. Along the top, you can see the following tabs. My Queue, where we are now. This includes all of the submissions that are my responsibility as the editor. If your journal has multiple editors, this can help to divide up the work and keep track of who needs to be on top of what. Unassigned includes any submissions that do not currently have an editor assigned to it. This might be the case if an editor has left the journal and withdrawn from a submission midway through the workflow. Be sure to check here from time to time to ensure no submissions have fallen through the cracks. All active includes all submissions that are currently in progress. This is where chief editors spend a lot of their time ensuring everyone's on top of their assignments and submissions are continuing to move through the workflow. Archives includes all submissions that have been rejected or that have already been published. At a glance, you can quickly see which stage each submission is at, including the first submission stage, the review stage, the copy editing stage, or the production stage. Using the blue arrow to the right, you can expand the entry to see additional details, including whether assigned reviews have been completed, whether revisions have been submitted or if there are any open discussions. Particularly important notes, such as whether a review is overdue, are also included in this interface. If you have a long list of submissions, you could use the search tool at the top to type in an author name or a title keyword, and that would help you narrow down the one you're looking for. In addition, you can use the filters to limit the list down to the, just those that are overdue and I can hit that X to remove that. Those that are incomplete, those that are just in a particular stage, or those that are just in a particular section. Filters are a great way to be able to really narrow down a long list of entries. Okay, now let's take a look at the submission from our author, Jalal, by clicking on the title. And this takes us to the detailed record of his submission. First, let's go up to the top and look at the metadata link. This opens up a window that includes all of the details of his submission, including which section it's in. And you can easily change that if you think it's inappropriate. The title, subtitle, abstract, list of contributors, a cover image, if you wanted to have images for each article, and in this case, keywords. And if you wanted to add some more keywords as the editor, you can do that right now. The Identifiers tab is where an identifier will show up once one's been assigned 
such as a DOI, but we're too early for that. Next to that is the editorial history. This tracks all of the activities that have taken place for this submission from the time it was submitted right up to the present. There's a few entries here already, and this will just grow over time as it spends more time going, making its way through the workflow. The submission library is a place where all members of the editorial team could access any files that are uploaded and shared. It's, this is an experimental feature in OJS that we're trying out, and it kind of acts like a, a shared Dropbox folder for everyone on the team. Now, if we move our way down, we can see that we're in the submission stage currently. And below that, we can see that there's a submission files panel. And in the submission files, we can see all of the files that were originally submitted by the author. In the previous video, we saw that Jalal just uploaded this one Word doc, so that's all we're seeing here. This little blue arrow will expand and allow us to see more information, which includes some history specifically about this file. And if we wanted to add any notes, we could add notes here. If we wanted to edit the file, we could change its name here, for example. Or if we wanted to delete it, we could delete it as well. Now this is pretty simple because we do just have the one file, but there could potentially be multiple files here. Jalal might have uploaded four different Word docs, one with the article text, maybe one with his references, maybe one with some tables. He may have up also uploaded some images. He may have uploaded a movie file or a sound file. There could be any number of different files that might be appropriate depending on the journal, and they could all be listed here. If you see a long list, it is searchable. So this will just search within that list of files. If you wanted to download them all, you could click there. And if you wanted to upload a new file, you could do so here. An example of where this might be handy is if the author emailed you an additional file they forgot to upload and you don't want to make them go back and log in and re-upload it. You just want to take care of it quickly. You could upload it right here. Once you're ready to read this file, all you have to do is click on the title and that will download it to your desktop where you can read it. Once you've read it, and you might have some questions that you want to ask to the author before you make that decision, whether to accept this for consideration, you can use the pre-review discussions. Discussions are a new part of OJS that have just been built into OJS 3, and it's a place where you can have conversations between different people involved in the submission and have it all tracked. Let's add a discussion that involves me as the editor and the author. Just add a subject line, maybe a question about references. Your submission did not include any references. Please submit any kind of question you might have. As you can see here, it's also possible to include an attachment. We don't need to do that, we'll just say OK. That sent this off as an email to the author, but it's also recorded here um, for future reference. And if we click on that little blue triangle, we've got an opportunity to edit or we could delete it. Over to the right, we can see some more information. There's a help link. And that brings up some documentation specific to the page that we're on. We've got some action buttons, including the blue send a review button. And once we've decided that this is actually ready for consideration and for peer review, we would click that button to move it on to the next stage. Accept and skip review might be used for something like a, a editorial commentary that's been submitted and you want to bypass peer review and just move it right into copy editing. And the next one, decline submission, is if you decide right at this point that it's not even worth going any further. Maybe it's out of scope or the quality is so low that you don't even want to consider it. You can hit that and take it right out of the workflow. Below this is another new feature in OJS3, the participants list. This is everybody who's involved with the submission. At this point, it's just the journal editor and the author. But over time, we're going to be adding copy editors, layout editors, proofreaders, potentially a journal might need translators, whatever works best for your workflow, 
those people will all get added to this participants list. The one exception are reviewers who in a blind peer review process would not be listed here to keep their identity secret. Now what I want to do as the editor-in-chief is assign a section editor to take over the uh, stewarding of this submission through the rest of the workflow. So let's do that now. I'm going to hit assign. I'll change this down to section editor. Hit the search button to find them. Now if I knew Tim's name I could just have typed it in there and it would bring him up but there's how we can search for him. If we wanted to limit what the section editor could do and only allow them to make a recommendation as opposed to actually make a decision and interact with the author we would check this but we trust him and we want him to go all the way with the uh, selection process. You can see this is a drop down that gives me a couple of options for a subject line and an automatic email shows up here. Editor, that's going to actually include Tim's name when the email goes out. Um, some text, we could revise this text if we wanted to right now, but this looks good. It's going to include the URL, the username, and of course a thank you from us. Hit OK. And that's done. Two things have happened. One, an email has gone out to Tim, letting him know that we'd like him to take on this assignment. And as well, we can see in the pre-review discussions, it's been included down here. And again, the communication is being tracked so that we've got an ongoing record of the, the various discussions. As well, we can see over here that Tim's been included as a section editor. And that pretty much is it for our journal editor. Kala can now leave it to Tim to take on the rest of the work in moving this through the workflow. And we'll see how that works out in the next video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you there.